Hello, this video covers section 9.2 from your textbook and it's about rational exponents which if you remember what rational exponents are they are numbers that can be written as fractions. So what we're going to be basically talking about is exponents where the power is a fraction. And before we get into doing any problems that involve rational exponents, we're going to review the rules for exponents. So the very first rule is the power, or the, I mean the product rule, and that's what you get when you multiply two exponents with the same power. So when we have x to the m times x to the m, it, we add the powers, it's x to the m plus n. That's the first property. Second rule is the power rule. What happens when we raise a power to a power? Well, then we multiply the powers. So this result would be x to the m times n. Then we have the power of a product rule. That's when we have a product, x times y, raised to a power. Well, in that case, we raise both parts of the product. The x we raise to the n power, and we raise the y to the n power. And then we have the quotient rule, similar to the product rule. The quotient rule says that when we divide two exponents with the same base, we subtract the power. So in this case, we're going to have x to the power m minus the power n. We also have the power of a quotient rule, which says we raise the numerator to the n power and also the denominator to the n power. Everybody should also know what happens when we raise something to the zero power. Anything raised to the zero power is 1. And so all those first six should be very familiar. You should also be familiar with negative exponents. x to the negative n power, we throw that x the n to the bottom to make it a positive exponent. And then if the x to the negative n is in the denominator, we throw it back up to the top. That makes it x to the positive n. If we want to turn a negative exponent into a positive exponent, we need to move it from the top to the bottom or vice versa from the bottom to the top. So these rules you need to you're going to be we're going to be using them throughout this section. And so we need to have a pretty good um, feel for how and when to use these. So let's now talk about rational exponents. Where do they come from? What's the idea of them? Well, let's consider this problem. We know that the square root of 9 equals 3. We also know that 9 is the same as 3 squared. So I could rewrite this left-hand side as 3 squared. And we then want to ask ourselves, okay, well, 3 squared raised to what power? The power of x equals 3. Well, to answer that question, we need to remember that when we raise a power to a power, we multiply the powers. And this right-hand side is really like 3 to the first power. So what would I have to multiply 2 by? 2 times x, what would I have to multiply 2 by to get 1? And the answer is what? It's of course one half because two times one half or two over one times one half is one. So in this case the x has to be one half. What about this cube root problem? We know it's true that the cube root of eight is two and of course eight, this left hand side radicand, can be written as two to the third we know the cube root of 2 to the third is still 2. So again, what do we have to raise the power 2 to the third to to get 2? In other words, 3 times what equals 1? Because this is really like 2 to the 1. Well, it's what? It's 3 times 1 third equals 1. So x is 1 third. And so what we just found out is that if I want to say the square root of a number, that's the same as raising that number to the one-half power. If I want to say the cube root of something, that's the same as raising that number to the 
one th one third power. So in general, if n is a positive integer greater than one, then the nth root of a can be rewritten as a to the one over n power. It's just another way of representing roots. That's why it's in this chapter with square roots and so forth. Well, sometimes we have um, also in addition to the root we have still powers so if m and n are both integers greater than 1 then a to the m over n power remember the bottom the n is still the index on the root but the m is now the power so it can be rewritten as this first option or the second power so you want to make a little notation here the m is the power and the n is the index of the root. So how do we put these concepts into practice? Well, here, 27 to the 1 third power, the index root in this case is 3. This means index that means this is a really another way of saying a cube root problem and the cube root of 27 we know is 3 same thing here this is really saying what is the cube root of 1 1 25th which is 1 5th Okay, now we're going to take a look at what happens when we have negative exponents. Remember, if we want to make a negative exponent, which we have here, a negative one-third, if we want to make it a positive exponent so we can evaluate it, we move it to the bottom. So this is going to be 1 over 27 to the positive one-third. And, of course, the one-third power is the cube root of 27. So this is really just 1 over again if we think about this next one there's probably a couple of steps we want to apply here remember if we have a quotient raised to a power we want to think about that as raising the top to that power and raising the bottom to that power And then because they're both negative exponents, we would like to make them positive. That means we need to move things around. So this negative 16 to the negative 1 half needs to move to the bottom. And then the 25 to the negative 1 half, if we want to make it positive, moves to the top. And remember, the 1 half power means not the cube root like the last example, but square root. So this is really saying the square root of 25. 25 to the 1 half power equals the square root of 25, which we know the square root of 25 is 5, and in the bottom, the square root of 16 is 4. So this kind of mess here, example D, is actually simplifies down to 5 over 4. Hope that makes sense. Now would be a good time to go ahead and start your self-check. You can see the first problem. There's a couple here of e examples of evaluating just like the problems we just did. So one thing I want to point out to you though on these examples is this first one, it has a power and an index. So when you're going to try to evaluate it, this is going to be the third root of 27 and I'm going to raise that though to the fourth power so you're going to want to evaluate what that means okay so now that we've worked with what rational exponents mean. Let's go ahead and now simplify some expressions containing rational exponents. So we're going to start to apply our properties now. Example A. 
we have an expression where we're multiplying two exponents and the base is the same. Remember, this is the product rule. When you do this, you do what with the powers? You add the power. So this is x to the 3 fourths plus the second power, which is 7 tenths. And we would like to know what those are. Well, remember when you add fractions you need a common denominator. In this case the smallest number that both 4 and 10 go to into is 20 so we need to multiply this one by 2 over 2 to get 20 and the first one by 5 over 5 to get 20. So this simplifies down to 15. 5 times 3 is 15 over 5 times 4 is 20 plus 2 times 7 is 14 over 2 times 10 is 20 so this is 29 twentieths and this is an example where we actually would like to keep it as an improper fraction we also want to ask ourselves can we reduce this well 29 is a prime number so the answer is no we cannot reduce this the answer here is 29 excuse me, it's x to the 29 over 20 power. Example B, well here we have a product raised to a power. Remember when we do this, that means we raise each part of this product to the 2 thirds power. So this is going to be the first part, the x to the 6 sevenths raised to the two-thirds power times the y to the three-eighths raised to the two-thirds power. Let's do a, another aside here. What, how do we multiply fractions? Well, the first one, when we raise a power to a power here now, we're going to multiply the fractions. So this is six over 7 times 2 over 3 and we can simplify a little bit 3 goes into 6 2 times so this is equal to 2 times 2 is 4 over 7 times 1 or 7 and then the second one we, we're gonna raise 3 eighths to 2 thirds so we multiply those we have 3 eighths times 2 thirds Again, we have some canceling. 3 goes into 3 once. 2 goes into 8 four times. So this simplifies to 1 times 1 is 1, over 4 times 1 is 4. So this could be rewritten as x to the, right here, 4 sevenths times y to the one-fourth. So we just simplified another rational expression, or an expression with rational exponents, I mean. And then the last one, or the last two here, just realized my lettering's off there. This should be example C. If we go ahead and work out this one, well, you might think at first that we could go ahead and multiply these radicals, take x times x to the third, but we can't because they have different index indices. The indices are different. Indexes. are different. So what do we do? Well this is when rational exponents come in handy because remember this first guy means x to the what power? The one-fourth power times this next one the index is 5 and it has a power 3 so this is the three-fifths power 
And again, when we multiply exponents, we add the powers. So this is x to the 1 fourth plus 3 fifths. You're trying to add that. We need a common denominator. So this is 1 fourth plus 3 fifths. We need to multiply by 4, by 5, to finally give us 5 over 20 plus 12 over 20. 5 plus 12 is 17 over 20. So this is equal to x to the 17 twentieths. And you can again use the same idea with this next example. Notice the indices are different, so we can't just flat out divide them. But we can rewrite this as x to the 14 over 4 power. It's over 4 because it's a fourth root. And the bottom, this is a square root, so this would be x to the 1 over 2 power. Not the one, not the over 4, but over 2 because it's a, essentially a square root there if you write the 2 in. Now... We're going to use the quotient rule. When we divide exponents with the same base, we subtract the power. So this is 14 over 4 minus 1 half. Of course, 14 over 4 reduces. That reduces to, to 7 over 2 minus 1 over 2. 7 over 2 minus 1 over 2 is 6 over 2. And of course, 6 divided by 2 is the third power. This actually simplifies to x cubed. And that is the last example I wanted to talk about. You should now be able to go ahead and try to attempt the last two problems on the self-check. 2a and 2b. Thank you for your time. We'll see you in class.